Ladies and gentlemen, we have a surefire Hall of Famer icon joining us as well. 16-time world champion. He's been a rapper. He's an actor. And on Thursday, premiering on HBO Max, he is the star of the series Peacemaker, a show in which we got a chance to screen a little bit here for the first time in our show's existence. Good for oh, us. Yeah. Yeah. Shout to us. And it's going to be legendary. I think everybody's going to love it. It's going to be a smash hit, ladies and gentlemen, John Cena. Yeah. What's up, dude? Mr. McAfee, I don't know what was better, the uh, introduction or that tank top. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hey, you know, every once in a while, you got to throw it. out Tuesday, man. No, every day, John. I do it every day. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing the same over here. Oh! oh! If I was you, I would never wear a shirt, though. You are one of the most yoked humans to ever exist, and you've had to do that on TV for, like, 20 years. I am... I, I spent uh, I spent uh, 20 years with my titties out, so I'm pretty good. <laughs> right I think we're in a good spot. Uh, I think you're in a great spot. You crushed it with the WWE. You carried an entire generation. Uh, depending on who you ask, but uh, thank you. You obviously have a... You lean into a, a John Cena bias. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, no problem at all. Okay, so let's dive into it. Let's talk about wrestling before we dive let's in. Let's not dive into it, but no, let's do it. <laughs> okay, let's go head first. Hey, we'll go head first right in. We'll go head first right in. Do you... Uh, first, no, what, damn it, Pat. How you doing? How are you? You know, I'm pretty good, John. How are you, man? Everything good? You've busy? Very, very busy, I assume, with the Peacemaker coming out on Thursday? Yeah, but, I mean, you know about being busy, too. We just, uh, we try to, you know, uh, I, I would be speaking for you, but I, I think you're probably one of those folks that just uh, tries to take one thing at a time, do the best with what you got in front of you, and move forward, right? Is that how you've been so, able to do so much, you think? Is it because you focus so much on the present? Like, you crush WWE so much. Listen, as a fan, and I know you catch heat probably, and that's why you cut me off earlier and said, depending upon who you ask, you were fucking great, dude. You should re always remember that, and I hope you understand what, that. Uh, what time is it where you're broadcasting, and how much have you had to drink? No, no, no. I don't drink anymore. I just smoke. But it's 1234 and Eastern. you obviously are on another plane. <laughs> but no, I, I, I appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, I am on another planet usually, <laughs> but I, it, it's a real thing. And, and if I'm on another planet all the time while I'm watching it, my uh, rating can be the exact same. You were great. Your promos were unbelievable. Getting to watch you live and listen to that audience give you the love and the buzz was fucking cool, dude. So I appreciate you uh, kind of coming back, doing the run when I was there. It was an honor. It was it was really well, cool see, to fucking once watch. Well, again, you got, you got a... Uh a very um, adjusted view, so I'm, I'm probably at the point where I could be de uh, deemed a nostalgia act, and you got to see that uh, pretty firsthand. Not, not to say that I didn't uh, treat it very seriously. I love every single time I step on the canvas. But man, had you showed up a little before that, it wasn't exactly all uh, the same reaction as it was for Summer Cena. Summer Cena, to me, I was caught by surprise every single arena I went to because it's usually a lot more as Michael Cole would say a uh, polarizing than that so that was kind of my first experience where um, I would say a majority of the audience uh, appreciated my presence there because normally it's weird you, you try to go out and play a character of virtue a character with a, a virtuous foundation and people tell you to fuck off and that's <laughs> and I mean they really would tell me that and that's a that's an interesting combination and that's i think that's what makes wwe beautiful and the live audience so special is because they they decide how they feel about characters you can you can be a virtuous character and you can be a character built on hard work uh loyalty uh respect you can embody <laughs> perseverance yeah <laughs> You can embody that, and the audience can choose as a collective, hey, this isn't what we're into right now. We'd, we'd prefer somebody more in the gray, or we'd prefer somebody more flawed. So I'm glad you actually got to see um, that reaction, but, but being out there for more than just that period of time, I need to let you know that it, it, it certainly wasn't always like that. And I was, I, I was actually really grateful for the fact that it wasn't, because it challenged me every single night if I'm if I'm going to play this virtuous character, I better do a damn good job because 
not only did they want to tell me to F off, but they were waiting for me to slip up. And they all, the, the audience themselves always kept me at my best. And I'm very thankful for that. Well, I think your promo is why, not only because you're physically capable, you're an incredible athlete, and you adjusted your move set and skill set, even though you will never get credit for it. But your promo is something that is made you a GOAT, right? Put you in the Mount Rushmore because of how you could talk. And it's interesting to hear you say like, well, if I slipped up at all, they were going to fucking bury me being your motivator. It, are you just, it, you couldn't, you, you had to take that personally, I guess, huh? Even though in wrestling, you're probably told don't, you don't, you can't, but at some point you have to take that personally, I'd assume. No, the secret is uh, just drink 20 ounces of bodily fluids every day. <laughs> bar, but that's, that's the secret. Uh, no, no, I just, um, it wasn't, it, it's, it wasn't that I wanted, I didn't want to get eaten alive. I just, I'm as passionate as the people on the other side of the barrier, you know, um, it's WWE is that weird zone where it isn't pure sport. It's not he who runs fastest wins. It is an, it is a participation event with every person involved. If you're up in section 313, you are still in the act. And you know when the red light is on, all of us are on TV collectively and all of our voices are heard. I can only imagine what your perspective is calling that action as, as another uh, piece of the puzzle to the viewing audience at home. I don't, um, I don't cater to that audience a lot. My, my ethos has always been if everyone in the arena is having a good time, the audience is at home is having a good time. We You're right, sporting, by the way. You're right. You are right. When we turn into sporting events, why are we on the edge of our seat? Because the audience is going crazy and there's tension in the air and that's palatable and we can feel it. So I always just wanted the arena to be rocking. And uh, everyone expects and shows up with high energy. And for me to go out there apathetic or uh, wanting to be somewhere else is – isn't isn't fair to to all those fans you know and hell i've been a fan i was in wrestlemania crushing beers before i got waxed by the undertaker <laughs> so uh i've been a fan and and that that would an experience that was one of my favorite experiences of all time because i got to sit out there and normally i'm peeking around from a curtain i can't sit and watch a wwe show i remember when they were like yeah we want to put you out there from like uh like 806 to 817 i'm like no i'm going out when doors open and i went out at three o'clock and I watched like three hours of WrestleMania. <laughs> it was so cool because they're like, you're going to get mobbed. I'm like, I'm going to get mobbed only for as long as it takes to meet everybody. And I literally, I met like three sections of people. And then everybody's chilled and watched the show. Hey, we're watching with John. Yeah. We're watching the show <laughs> yeah, with John. Yeah, like, hey, man, stop. And then I, I made great friends with some people who traveled from Australia, some people who traveled from across the U.S., buying each other beers. Like, literally, I crushed you know, three tall drafts before they told me the Undertaker was there and I had to hop the barricade and go and go wrestle the Undertaker. But it was that was a great experience for me because I got to to be something I, I admire and something that I am. I got to be a fan. I got to watch it from the seats. So I guess that's what that's what kept me on it every night. Uh, earlier performers like like Undertaker, like Eddie Guerrero, those guys Rest in peace. really leaned into the fact that people paid to see them and they would give them of all of themselves to make sure that you got your money's worth. And I, I learned that, le that message very early on. Okay, so by the way, that's awesome to hear. And I think that is what every fan would hope that the, you know, the he top big guy, the top guy would uh, have that type of passion. So after all those years of pouring in every single night as if it's WrestleMania every night and every promo is your last promo, everything you have to reprove yourself every single night, that's a chip on the shoulder that elite athletes have. You, you just got exhausted with it. You, you, were you excited for the next chapter? And at what point did you realize like acting is probably gonna be the natural move here because I'm great at speaking, I'm already having to do uh, shows and I am absolutely fucking yoked, dude. Like at what point? <laughs> at what point did that whole thing kind of creep in you know and was uh, it because you were exhausted uh, we, we are I, I'll give you all the time you want today man this is absolutely the most fun I've had in an interview I've, I've been waiting to do this for a long time and you have exceeded expectations let's go yeah! and thanks for coming on John what? thank you uh, no you know I um, in, in playing a character that uh, you know like I said a character of virtue a character that started uh, as a generic wrestler and then morphed into this um hip-hop persona and then morphed into this uh character of virtue to to play the same character for a long time is uh is that's a challenge i loved the challenge i really loved it when like 
uh, early on, you know, I, I remember Vince toyed with the idea of possibly turning me heel for the for the Rock, the Rock One in Miami, and I told him, I'm like, hey, no problem, 100, percent I'll do it, but just remember that this is so um, we're so deep in at this point, we can't do it and then jump back, because we'll be we'll be sunk at both ends. Yeah. So if we do it, I have to be the opposite of virtue. I have to be pure evil, and we have to go all in. And and from a believability standpoint, I've always you know, people always see me in uniform. Fig- go figure that. If you, if, you, if you didn't see me in a suit in WWE, you saw me in a ball cap, T-shirt, jean shorts, sneakers. You saw me in uniform because I want, yeah, cause wristbands because I want people to know that what they see is, is somebody they can relate to. And um, he decided against it. And it's, at that point, he was like, listen, I don't think we're ever going to do it. So that's me getting, okay, you, can, you, have, the, you have the luxury of playing this character but you always are going to play this character, which was great because it got me to dive into nuances that kind of spawned the creation of like the Firefly Funhouse match where I like, yo, what if I went on a meta experience through all of my my flaws and through all like my timeline? So, you, you know, you can do stuff like that. Um, but it's really fun to be able to be like, hey, you want to be this weird dude who thinks he's a superhero and murders people in the name of peace? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds like a great time. I'd like to do that as well. I'm like, hey, you want to be this weird, conflicted boyfriend and have awkward sex with Amy Schumer on camera? And like, yeah, that'd be fun. I can tell some jokes during that. That'd be fun. So um, it's not that I thought I would be any good. It's uh, when you do something for as long as you do it. What brings me back to WWE isn't the falling down. It isn't the uh, improvement of physical skill. It's the storytelling. I like being able to tell uh, a story with, with Roman Reigns that I don't think he's a worthy champion, and for people to buy into that, and not because he's not, uh, not because of the value of the belt. Let's say it's because of who he is as a human being, and point out what I believe is his character flaws, and then we go back and forth. There you go, right on. <laughs> then we go back and forth about that. Um, I love the challenge of telling a story, and acting is literally just being able to change characters whenever you want and tell a new story. And I found that pretty intriguing. So let's talk about this Peacemaker character because yeah. I'm not a big superhero guy, never have been, okay? And I, I do feel bad because a lot of my friends are. I, what I've learned here, you're in the DC world, okay? Yep. You're in the DC, you're an outcast though. They don't like you and you're for adults after watching a couple of the episodes we got sent. I think the show's gonna do very well. I'm not a superhero guy, but early reviews have to be great and you have to be pumped that this is going to be something that's going to be around for I, what, how long? Everybody's superhero oh, yeah. forever. Multiple yeah. seasons. Hey, you could potentially Feed be me. the same character, just like Vince told you. <laughs> you could be the same character for the next 20 years. It's awesome, it seems like. Pat, they hired the right guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you may not be a superhero guy, but I got to hear you say it. You got to be a peacemaker guy. Hey, I'm a peacemaker guy, dude. Hey, <laughs> hey I'm a peacemaker. Hey, I'm a peacemaker. All right, I'm a peacemaker guy. <laughs> I am. I'm in. It was cool. It was awesome to watch. And that's not something I would ever go and check out. But we got a chance to see it. You were in it, right? I'm a fan of yours. You always seem to create great shit. I mean, Ferdinand, dude. Are oh, you Are you yes. kidding me, bro? Yes. And that, that got an audience pop, too. I appreciate it. You got a hell of a studio in there. Oh, 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 yeah, the boys. Yeah, we're all big Cena fans. I mean, uh-huh, there's, there's yeah. going to be questions all around here. We're all big Cena fans. I think the first time I met you, and you meet so many people, and you did like however many make-a-wishes with the WWE, your days were filled with nonstop work. There was an NXT event I was at with Michael Cole. Uh, It was one of my first times. And uh, you walked in and I was sitting in a comfortable chair and you sat behind me in a bad chair. And I was like, whoa, 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 like this, I should not be here. So I go to get up, I'm like, you want the seat? And you're like, no, no, sit down. And I literally said, hey, Ferdinand's a fucking banger, dude. And then I just turned back around like this. And Cole goes, uh, what'd you say? I was like, I told him that Ferdinand's a fucking banger, dude. That was a great movie. You do. You have a history of making bangers in selecting great movies. You don't have... You've, you've seen some of my early amateur work, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I assume that's the case. You have that in every movie you're in as well. But the um, this Peacemaker is going to be a hit. It's going to be a smash. And, uh, yeah, and I, I hope so. It's, uh, it's like going into a main event where people are interested. We have good reviews. There's a lot of buzz around the character. Everybody's excited for the show to come out on HBO Max. You know, uh, we're two days away from it. I'm I'm in uniform, which means people relate to the character enough for me to... They, they gave me the uniform. It's not even mine. DC owns it. So for them to lend out the, the Peacemaker IP, I'm, I'm very happy about that. It seems like... Uh, 
it seems like we got something that's interesting on our hands, and it's it's that feeling of going into that main event with a little bit of buzz, going into that championship game with a little bit of buzz. And now all we got to do is deliver. And I really hope we can do that to audiences around the world in two days. Well, I think it's going to crush. And HBO Max has such a large platform. People are going to be intrigued as soon as they see, you know, James Gunn. Right? Oh, yeah. James oh, yeah. Gunn. Oh, yeah. That's a big time name in this entire game. In the writing, it's just. Man, I got to tell you, I love the posse you got in there. They're like Team Harumph. Like James Gunn. Yeah, Harumph. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, that's because I get a lot of shit wrong. So, you know, unlike you, you know how you're like, hey, if I get things wrong, they'll crush me for it. I get things wrong on a daily. And the Ah, no, they're much smarter than me, but they do have questions, actually. Ty yeah, Schmidt was in a uh, Ty Schmidt was in a SmackDown commercial from the uh, WrestleMania in which you sprinted from your seat when Undertaker came back and you ran. He was up on whose shoulder? Up on his chair, I yeah. think, and did a full boom, and it ran in the SmackDown thing. Ty, one of your biggest fans, question for Yeah, me. one of the best moments of my life for seeing <laughs> that. Uh, John, speaking of the creative process, I know you're a producer on this as well, but James Gunn, obviously, like Pat mentioned, very respected, and he, you know, directs it and writes it. How much uh, were you involved with kind of like shaping the season, and how much of the character did you get to like play around with as you were getting ready uh, for the show? Uh, that's a great question. I think I probably could have taken more leverage, um, but I didn't want to. Um, I think the the uh, the invite to be a producer on the show was Warner's, was DC's, was HBO Max's way of saying, we are invested in you. And we're invested in you so much that we'd like to include you in this process. What I did do was uh, open my ears and keep my mouth shut. I'm around people who make good television. I'm around great storytellers. And James puts a great production team around him. People that know uh, how to get shit done. So I learned a little bit about budget. I learned a whole hell of a lot about COVID protocol, um, you know, uh, daily schedule, uh, I was in my first uh, post-mortem meeting. Like, I learned about their game plan. And I got to pretty much sit in the coach's corner, so to speak, and learn from people with a, a shit ton of wisdom. So I really think it was their way of saying we're investing in you, which made, which made me feel great. But in no way did I take that title and abuse it. I realized I'm a rookie and I got a lot to learn. And uh, I got a chance to learn from some pretty wise people, and that's exactly what I did. Well, we think you did a great job after watching the screeners. You went all in, too. And I can't thank you enough. All. All in. All in. Yeah. All, in. <laughs> all in. Hey, you. Hey, you might we're win some just, awards. We're not, we're not just. We're not putting the tip. It's the whole piece. The whole piece. <laughs> uh -huh. All in. And I think you might win some awards. And I can't wait to see your career continue. Ladies and gentlemen, Star of Peacemaker, which comes out on Thursday on HBO Max. John Cena. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Tip, man. I love talking to you. I hope I can come back. Oh, that's John. In costume, out of costume, whatever you want to do, dude. And uh, just just before we go, I want to congratulate uh, you and your team on all your success. And I also want to congratulate you for your candor upon your announcement of that success. It shows who you are as a person, and that's a damn class act. So uh, hats off to you. Man, thank you, John. We appreciate the hell out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, John Cena. Thank yeah, you. John! John! Welcome back, Anton. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. So we were... Uh, so we were not originally given an out time. He uh, had an interview yeah, five, just got five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> ah, well, and then he, gotcha. well, then he said you got me as long yeah, as you want. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah, and I assume he just has like those yeah, slots. Yeah. Because remember, we have fallen on the wrong side yeah. of one of those slots. Many a time. Many yeah, a time. We, all, we all know what happened. You said the boys have some questions, and then all of a sudden his team came in and said, hey, we got to wrap this oh, up. Oh, come that, on. Yeah. No respect for the bugle. Oh, that yeah. would be smart to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a great hey, time. I was going to say, I promoted the show. Yeah, that was great question he knows that I, anyway, 